Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to, uh, I'm just filming this on my phone, but I'm, today I'm going to uh, put together what's called a Noel guard, Noel guard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because I went back to look at some trail cam footage that I have. I have a trail cam set up right by my Bluebird house and at night raccoons were invading uh, the house. They were raccoons of course can climb up and down trees and my uh, bluebird house is mounted on a tree so uh only about five five and a half feet up and uh raccoon climbs tree proceeds to stick his arm in and pull nesting materials out of it so as uh, i i have uh some duct pipe about 12 inch in diameter five foot tall, about 60 inches long, and about five foot in diameter that kind of opens up and closes. And I'm going to put that around the base of the tree. That's kind of the first line of defense. And then the second line of defense is going to be this Noel guard. And I've, I've never heard of a Noel guard, uh, you know, before. So uh, this is something new for me. And I, that, there was no instructions anywhere on how to build them. So, you know, I figured, well, you know, I'll just go ahead and give it a shot. See, see what we can put together. And uh, first and foremost, let's look at the tools. Okay, this is the birdhouse that I'm uh, trying to put the Noel guard on it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna come, it's gonna be kind of attached to the side of this because this particular one rides like that. So it's gonna go up like this and come down, go across and up here. And it's gonna stick out three or four inches. So there's, some people say it's their front porch. You know, they can come in here, get on the front porch and then hop in and then they can just fly out or jump out. And, but what it does is it keeps a raccoon, since it's three or four inches out, they have a tougher time reaching in and getting their hand into the nest. And it, provide, it also provides protection from squirrels. So let's look at some of the materials that we're going to use. Okay, this is some of the materials that we're using. It's called hardware cloth. And it's not cloth at all, actually, it's wire. And I think this is quarter inch, uh, these holes here. And I'm definitely gonna work with gloves. I have uh, sliced uh, this finger before working with a kind of sheet metal in that. And now I don't have feeling in, in the end of my finger because of that, you can see it kind of humped up right there, but uh, do wear gloves. Uh, this stuff is sharp and it will cut you. So. Uh, anyway, what I'm doing is, let me get, is I found a brick that's about equal size here. And what I hope to do with this is, you know, I mean, the thing's going to be like, you know, come out from the feeder and, and go to, let me see, I don't have an extra hand here, go out to about here. So what I want to do is take this brick, since I know it's pretty much the same proportions, and see if I can cut out, um, lay the brick down here. And what I need to do is cut out this hardware cloth, roll this around like that, because I want it to go all the way around the brick. And so I'll end up cutting it up here. And then what I'll do is kind of roll this into a, a rectangular shape. And then I'll probably flat, try to flange the ends of this, uh, making it to where I can put screws with washers in to kind of attach this. And I can trim it uh, to length. It doesn't have to be, of course, this, this, lo this long coming out. I can half it, but I do need the brick for the measurements of uh, what we're trying to do here. So let's see if we can get some of this done. And I'm using 10 snips, as you can see here, you can, you can get these at the hardware store to cut this wire. And uh, these edges though are sharp, uh, the little little pieces here uh, along the edge. So uh, especially on this side, because I, I think I left those open like that so I could bend them around. And the bending, that's where my leather gloves are gonna come into, into play is that I, I do not want to get uh, jab, jabbed or cut with this stuff. So uh, anyway, let me get to work. Okay, this piece just happens to be about 16 and a half inches long. And let me measure the width. And it's about eight inches wide. So what we wanna do now is kind of center this on, on the, 
feeder there, the top of the box. And what we're going to be doing, this is so hard to do one-handed, is bend these down. As you, you can see how it kind of makes a protective area there. And we'll do this on both sides. And that's what I'm going to use this brick for, is to measure about where I want my bend. And I want it on about that right there on that one. So what I'll do, really should have thought about this, about filming this, is, uh, hang on. What I want to do is lay the, the brick on where I wanted to bend it. And so, cause, cause what we're trying to do is make a 90 degree. And uh, then I, remember this brick's about the same width as this. So, what I'm trying to do, I'll bend it both up on uh, 90 degrees here, and uh, we'll see how, see how it turns out. Hang on. Okay, so uh, we've bent it on both sides, and what I actually did was uh, I took the brick out and kind of bent it on itself. I gotta be careful here. <laughs> A little bit you can see this one right here has a lot square corner and that's because I made the bend uh, I bent it over a little bit extra just to make sure I got that corner crease in I'm going to do this with the other side uh, as well okay next I wanted to move the brick out a certain distance where I leave enough to where these two can fold together and meet on the bottom and I can uh, attach those together and and then I'll have the box. Now, the box right now is too, it appears too long, but, but you got to remember the hole is going to be up here and the bird's uh, flying uh, out this way. So if it's too long, I can uh, just cut along here, but I've got to square it off right now uh, uh, just to get the bottom pieces right to where it, it looks kind of like, like that right there. Okay. I just had an idea to, and I stood the bricks up because that's the way the bend is here. And so I decided, well, let's just put another brick in there and these just fit perfect. And what I do is I fold these down to try to make it, you know, come together. Now, what I'll do is I'll try to crease these corners real well, kind of square them out. And then I'll uh, do my attaching uh, here with some wire. We have some uh, wire right here that just happened to come with the hardware cloth to kind of contain it, but it's a uh, nice and flexible wire. So uh, I'll be able to probably fashion that into uh, something there. Uh, anyway, but this two brick method may just work out perfect. And this was about 16 and a half inches long. You know, if I measure all the way around and I th think I said eight inches this way. And I got the two bricks and you can see that really, if I would have known this ahead of time, I could have just used two bricks like that and just, you know, just cut, measure out the length of the brick and the hardware cloth. And then, uh, you know, cut out the, the length to where it wraps all the way around, just mark it with a Sharpie or something, cut that to length, cut it to the length on uh, both sides here, and then you can do your folding. Well, let's see how it goes uh, after we get it folded. Okay, so here's how it looked, and, and we can see it's way too long, but it, it just happened, and, and you're talking about, the, I guess it's great to be lucky. Um, the the length that I cut the, the 16 and a half inch to go around two bricks just fit perfectly for this application, okay? And I'm gonna put the attachment things on top because I figure the birds will be uh, landing here and going in and we don't need a lot of sticky and uppy and all that on here. The top uh, will be a little better to probably fabricate. Now, your uh, bluebird house might have a different size hole and this and and it is kind of close for me I, I have to attach it actually to this block over here this block and then figure a way to attach it down here as well and i'll attach it uh on top as well 
but yeah, I fig have to figure out how to attach it down here because this one happens to open from the front, clean out. And this is a nice, uh, this is a nature's way uh, bird box and they've got uh, a nice little thing there so things can drop down. Um, bird deposits, they have little uh, curves there in, in the uh, door there so you can, um, the birds can kind of climb up to get to the hole to see out the hole the chicks can. But uh, so let's, let's get to work on, I, I don't have currently the screws but I'll be back with them here after I go to the store. But in the meantime, what I need to do is get these these uh, edges attached right now they're not lined up but i'm not going to fool with it because i got bare hands and this stuff uh, will definitely stick you end up with a lot of cuts okay looking at the length of this i think i can cut it i can actually get two of the boxes out of this so i'm, I'm actually doing a twofer here so using two bricks like I had over here, will make me two of these. Uh, and I can put one, I'll, I'll cut it in half and I'll sew the top on uh, both of them. And um, I'll go ahead and cut it first to the length that I want. And then I'll sew, you know, right here with the wire. And then I'll do the other one separately. But right now we're gonna concentrate on getting this, this this is a template because this is the same bird house that bluebirds are currently in that are being raided by raccoons. So, you know, if I have it, you know, up to about here, the raccoon's gonna have a tough time reaching in and with their the length of their hand and, and getting into the box and reaching down into the box. They might can get to the hole, but they're gonna have a tough time getting in. But like I said, this is my second line of defense. The first line of defense is going to be a, um, a, a duck pipe around the tree that it's on. That's 60 inches tall, 12 inches around because of the width of the tree. And that's going to be the first line of defense. And this is the second line. And this protects against squirrels and possibly snakes. If you keep these uh, edges the way they are, it's not, not going to be real fun for a snake or, or squirrel to get in. And it's not going to be comfortable uh, for the... I'm going to leave the edges out like this. Uh, so, um, of course, our bird knows to, to kind of land and go in it. but And it takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes for them to figure it out. They'll look this way. They can see the hole. They just got to figure out how to get to it. But once they do, uh, it'll be second nature. And they call this a front porch because when it's uh, sitting this way, the bird can kind of come out uh, on here and then take off. And he can land on his front porch and go in as well. So, anyway, sorry to make you seasick here. Uh, let me go ahead and cut this in half, and uh, so I'll have two of them and sew that top up. And like I said, this is the same bird as I have out there. I wanted to go ahead and make it the template and make it on this bird box so I could just walk it out and screw it on, you know, to the, the birdhouse uh, when I get out there. I'll tap on the box, make sure, you know, on the side of the box, make sure no, no blue birds are in it. And I can actually open the door uh, on the other one has um, a side door and I can uh, make sure that it's uh, uh, it's got a plexiglass on the inside so you can look in and without disturbing the nest and um, and and then I once the bluebird make sure bluebirds are not in it I can uh, mount this up there but I want to get it all constructed first so I can just walk up with a few screws screw it on and boom we're, we're good to go so it's not disturb the birds. Okay guys, I found invaluable tools here. When you're having to work and bend this wire to some real small, kind of to make it to sew our edges in, then these are gonna come in just extremely handy. I actually got two sizes here, a small one and a, a larger one, but I'm sure either one will work fine. But good, good advice on uh, because you're handling it less with your hands. See these little sharp points there? Um, those will get you. So, uh, and you got got points on this one over here as well. So, uh, good to have tools to be able to work around all these sharp edges there and kind of protect your hands. Hey, a little trick I found is if you take these little, see that little knob there? 
you from the other side you can bend that around and that's what i'm doing here to, it kind of sews it together and then i'll run this wire through it kind of loop it through like a stitch but i can take each of these little nubs and use my needle nose Each of these little nubs here, let's see if we can get the, the, what, this in the picture here. I can take those and bend those around and, uh, you know, kind of to the other side around the edge there. And then I'll take this wire and I'll sew it like that. Okay, you can see that I hadn't even um, done my wire through yet. But see how I have these, these bent like this, kind of around the edge. But they're sticking up initially. So what I did is I got my brick, put it in there, and just kind of smashed it down a little bit to kind of lay those things down because we don't want any sharp edges. You know, this will be on the top side, frankly. This will be up top. But still, I don't want any sharp edges uh, on, on the top of this little porch, front porch, Noel guard that I'm making for them. Okay, guys, this is how the end product is supposed to look. I hadn't bolted it on yet, but you can see it provides a good bit of protection. They they really have to kind of uh, reach pretty far in. I think this comes about four feet, four inches out from that, but I'll attach it, you know, to the sides here. I'll find out I'll attach it to the bottom. And uh, I did stitch it on the top, tried not to have any sharp edges. So uh, they've got a little front porch and hopefully some protection. Now I'll apply this to the feeder that's out there. I just want to be able to walk up. I mean, number one, check, make sure no bluebirds are out there um, and uh, knock on the box and then open it and then uh, screw this on. And, and then hopefully that's one layer of protection until uh, the, the duct pipe comes in. Thank you so much for uh, watching and i'll show you the final uh, installation uh, when we get it done thank you okay i'm sure you guys have a better solution for this but i needed you know like i said i was gonna put a screw in here one in the top uh one on the side and i didn't have any way to kind of attach these so i just went round and round a couple of times i probably should have used something like a dowel or a screwdriver big thick screwdriver and wrap that around there to make it a little more neat. But what I'll end up doing is just putting a screw with a washer there and a screw with a washer here. That way it's attached at the bottom. And like I said, it'll be attached to the sides. And the one out there that's with bluebirds in it, I, I will not probably not put the one in the top because they're in it and I don't want to have to take the roof off. Uh, I don't want to disturb them. I just want to drop a screw here, one over here one there and one there and then they'll have their little front porch all set to go and like i said it sticks out about four inches and uh provides them some protection from snakes squirrels and uh raccoons uh that this is just one of the like i said get getting raccoons not to climb a tree is one of the big ones so uh but anyway that's uh, hopefully gives you an idea of uh you know how to uh, create a little more protection for our bluebirds thank you okay uh, here's the installed knoll guard see i've got screws on the bottom that i put in with that little those little wire twisty wire things because uh, i just needed a way to attach it and one up here you've got these points out here that you know, make it kind of painful for a raccoon to stick his arm in and uh, and get to that. It's like a front porch. They can uh, fly in, land here and jump in, or they can just fly straight out or fly like that. Uh, this is, uh, I didn't have to put a screw in the top because I got one in the, in the bottom to the size, kind of probably overkill. Probably should have uh, angled this screw over here toward uh, that way 
and pre-drilled it maybe. This pretty, this number 12 screw is what it did. It uh, ended up cracking as you can see right there, but I think we're we're still gonna be good. This make it hard for squirrels and uh, that that to kind of get in. Uh, snakes that gotta kind of go over this, this, this wire uh, edges here, which is kind of uncomfortable. So uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of how it looks there. Uh, we hope the bluebird will figure it out and that'll keep the raccoons. I'm also going to put a, uh, on this tree, I've ordered a, a 12 inch in diameter uh, duct pipe that I'm going to wrap around the, the, the base of this tree. And it's five feet tall, so it ought to come up to about here. And uh, hopefully that will uh, prevent some of the raccoons from just climbing straight up from the bottom. Uh, but anyway, new Noel guard and uh, glad we, we got it up. And uh, I've got uh, just right here, I have a camera. And this is what picked up the, the raccoon uh, shining over this way, climbing up and getting into the house. So that's, there you go. Thank you. If you got any questions, just post them uh, in the, the comments and we'll see if we can get back to you. Hello, I just wanted to uh, do a little segment on uh, the actual surround of the tree here. You can kind of see it below the nesting box there. We uh, got some uh, 12 inch in diameter duct pipe. And uh, let, me, let me give you a little tour of, of uh, you know, how we uh, manage that. Okay, here is, uh, the, of course, the nesting box with the newly installed Noel guard. As you can see, right there, they have a little front porch. And right underneath that, we're going to see the uh, duct pipe that I installed. It's uh, 60 inches tall. And of course, I tried to camo paint it and uh, so it wouldn't be all bright shiny metal and uh, it's 12 inches around now you know this will depend on the uh, you know diameter of your tree as to what uh, you know duct pipe you might want to install but this tree i happened to use uh, 12 inches that was the largest i could find and it, it was a little small at the bottom and i'll show you in just a second what what a little mod I had to do uh, to get that. and uh, But this is gonna keep the raccoons and the snakes from uh, going up the tree here. And we're, we're not doing a whole lot of damage to the tree either. I'll show you uh, in just a sec. But uh, now squirrels can still jump, you know, from top of tree to other tree, from other trees and get to it. But hopefully the knoll guard will uh, you know, keep the squirrels from um, bothering the bluebirds. Uh, here's a look from the back side of the tree, uh, back toward, you, you probably can't see the feeders for that uh, red cedar tree there, but uh, you can see the, how I had to uh, attach it to the tree. We've got, uh, sorry, it's a little dark. I've got one screw right there. Now, to get through both of these, I had like an ice, modified ice pick uh, that I uh, tapped, had to tap holes all the way through. Uh, and this is, of course, wrapped around, as you can see here. Normally, if, the, if I was putting around a pole, this side and the, the other side would attach together. And then, of course, you could attach it further. But, but that was just one screw I used. And then as the tree got bigger toward the bottom, of course, I had to, uh, you know, add another screw and, and there was some separation uh, going on. But that's uh, the, the other screws right there and a little bit of separation. I don't think this is going to uh, produce enough purchase or, you know, I'm, that, that's a word for getting a hold of something uh, of a raccoon or snake or something to get up into that. Now some might say well I guess he could he could kind of squirm in there and try to get up there but it really narrows up here toward the top so I don't think that it would 
the snake will go to the trouble of trying to do that. But uh, anyway, I just used some black paint, kind of random spraying on this, and, and a little bit of brown paint, just to kind of look, because if you look at the tree itself, you know, it's kind of got silver, it's got some light and dark in it, so I just tried to make it blend a little better, so be more neighbor friendly and not as bothersome to the birds. So that's that's the uh, you know housing and that's going to be a raccoon and snake protector. Now right here you can see I have a cam right here, a trail cam pole mounted to kind of watch activities of what goes on in the, the nesting box right on the other side of this this tree here. Now the female was having trouble with it so I tried to kind of put some some of the uh, accumulated uh, oak seedlings and that on top of it and some branches around it because let me show you what I think was bothering the female. I'll get you up close here, just a minute. Okay, I brightened things up a tad, uh, but the, I, these reflective uh, surfaces here, I think the, the, the bluebird would fly, female would fly back and forth and peck on the camera here. Uh, up above it here, that's the infrared uh, light that shines through at night. That's the lens. Uh, these are the motion sensors uh, down here. And I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, that might be a light as well. But uh, this is a, the cam, and I'll, I'm on cam right now. It's probably recording me that I'm recording. So what I did is I tried to put some, as you can see, uh, moss and, and, and tree limbs around to make it look more natural and not quite as threatening uh, because when it was just out on the pole itself it really stood out and uh, the reflection so so far the female hadn't dove at it and so I think we're, we're going to be successful there making her a little less nervous because we don't want to stress her uh, when she's trying to get her nesting box in place and uh, you know, hopefully lay eggs and, uh, and we'll get, have some new uh, chicks and fledglings soon. And, but I want to be able to record it with this camera. We're about eight, seven or eight feet away from the nest here. Even though it's really wide angle, I'll have to zoom in when I produce any kind of film. But uh, anyway, that's, that's my plan. We'll, we'll see how it works out. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, to this project, and I uh, hope you got something out of it. Please stay tuned uh, for future videos on this channel, and once again, have a great day, and God bless.